Good day, folks. This is Greg Judy at Green Pastures Farm. Today, um, I'm back here on a farm. This is actually a farm that just sold. Oh gosh, this last last fall. Yeah, 181 acres in here, and uh, I think it's 181, 182. Doesn't matter. Um, it was a cattle farm, and. Uh, it had water set up on it. It had high tensile paddocks put in it. Um, it was set up nice. It was a turnkey operation. You just had to bring the cows in. And um, actually, it's, look at this. It sits right next to our bull farm. <laughs> this is the back of our bull farm right here. This is where the boys and I cleared this pond. I wanted to show you. How beautiful it is now this pond is absolutely it catches a lot of rain see it goes all the way up that valley and so they caught a bunch of rain over here back in um, June we got an inch and they got eight inches over here and it was coming out the spillway over there it's a one of the few ponds that I've seen water come out of the spillway for a long time Oops. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> I've never done that before. I dropped the camera while I'm filming. I guess it's still shooting. Yep, it is. That excuse my my clumsy fingers. Anyway, um you can see the water's got a really nice color to it. And that pond feeds uh, two water tanks on the back of our bull our bull farm lease. This is um, Doug and Joanna's farm. It's just a beautiful, beautiful farm. They they really hit that. They really hit a good stroke when they bought this. Um, but anyway, here's the rest of the story. Uh, I bought the hay off of this. The, the, the new landowner, he's a developer ripped out all the fence um, brought a surveyor in here and split all this into 10 acre tracks so there's going to be 18 houses over here 18 houses this will never grow beef again ever 181 acres kind of makes you sad um anyway my hay contractor he he uh i guess they approached him about bailing it they want it to look pretty you know to put houses on it to sell it and so he came in and bailed it and it got all that rain uh the first of august before he bailed it so it, there was a ton of green came up in it pretty darn good hay it's got uh orchard grass fescue clover a, not very much, but a little bit of alfalfa. It's just good, you might say, mixed grass hay with some legume in it. But, uh, I don't know, it's just been kind of tugging on my heart as I go across this farm, picking up these bales and visualizing what's coming here. Um, the guy's putting gravel roads all over these beautiful pastures to get back to the home sites. Folks, we're... we're uh, we're 30 miles from Columbia. 30 miles. And I didn't think we'd ever see development like this that far away from Columbia, but we are. And, uh, yeah. So I read the other day we're developing, we're putting houses now on 11 million acres. 11 million acres of farmland is being converted to houses, shopping malls, stores, industrial centers, 11 million acres a year. Folks, if we don't wake up, we're not gonna have any land left to grow food on. Why do we have to come out here in the middle of this country and take up valuable farmland to put a stinking house? You know, there's plenty of subdivisions close to town. Put the subdivisions in there. I mean, that's where all the infrastructure is. There's no water back here. 
There was no electricity. There wasn't any roads. I mean, there's no water back here. And you're a jag. I mean, you got to go clear back to F to get water. That's probably three quarters of a mile. And there's no electricity. None. There's no lines. It's going to cost a fortune to run power back here. So, yeah. I don't know. They say there's never been a developer that didn't think a piece of, a piece of ground didn't look good unless it had a house sitting on it. Well, this used to have cows sitting on it. <laughs> and never again. Ah. Yeah. That's something we're going to make sure of on our property. You know, we're not going to be here. Nobody lives forever. But Jan and I have already talked about it. It's not going to happen. And there's ways you can make it not happen. One is a conservation easement. You can sell one of those on your property. It can never be developed. But now the person that buys it with that conservation easement on it, he can't, you know, he, he can't build a, a bunch of houses on it. I guess you, know, you can have your residence on it, but you can't, can't build houses. I think this is a beautiful, beautiful view. This isn't the best view, by the way. The best view is up to by that tree. Um, I've got my inline hollow there. I can get six bales at a time on. And uh, that's where I need to be walking toward. So I just moved my tractor down to the next load here. But uh, that inline hauler, I've had that thing about five years. And, uh, you know, we buy our hay. Normally I have it delivered. But uh, my hay contractor bailed this. I made a deal with him. It's only three miles from our farm. Matter of fact, the bull farm's right there. <laughs> so we, we literally have to haul it, you know, a hundred yards. But um, for some of it. Anyway, I told him I'd haul it. And so he knocked the price down on it considerably per bale. And so I, I looked at what I'd have in gas and time. I'm like, you know what? I can whip that out pretty quick. So six bales at a time I'm getting, uh, when I'm really rocking and rolling, I can get about three and a half loads, three and a half, three and a half to four loads an hour. Uh, so that's four, there's six on that trailer there. <laughs> that's about 20 to 20, around 20, 24 bales an hour. Isn't this beautiful back here? There's going to be a house right there. There's going to be one out there where that tractor's setting. There's going to be one up here where this truck's setting. There's one over there where that blue water tank. That's a livestock tank. They'll rip that out. I mean... Uh, you, know, you look a long time before you find a prettier farm than this one. I just wish I could have got a hold of the previous landowner before he sold it. I think I could have found somebody that would have bought this. And they would have left it a cattle farm instead of growing stinking houses. But, oh well, <laughs> you know what? It is what it is. And uh, you just got to get over it. Um going to show you this hauler this is a pretty cool rig um you do have to have a tractor to push them up on there they just slide on that rail <clears throat> excuse me and uh, then you pull this pin pull this pin and this arm that's a six foot arm and maybe, that's probably seven foot it comes swinging out toward me here and when i pop it even with this wheel that whole thing goes zoop, it dumps and then you use that arm to bring it back, lock it, and then put your pin in, you're ready to go. So you don't need a tractor on the other end. You only need a tractor to load. So I've got six times 12, that's 7,200 pounds on there. I'm guessing those are 12 to 1,500 pound bales. I mean, 
um, he makes a really nice bail. One thing you want to do is when you put them on here, if you see a string like this, see that string hanging on? Just grab it, wad it up, and always, well, I'll do it when I get done, but you stick it under the twine like that. If you don't, when you unroll that bale, unload it, there's always a chance you could lose a piece of your netting. So before you take off, just make sure there's no loose threads hanging down on your post, on your, your post, on your bale. Folks, I gotta get going. It's a busy, I've got a busy morning here to get all these hauled, but it's a beautiful day. This morning I had a coat on, it's 65 degrees. And it felt awful darn good. Anyway, I'll get out of here. I'm going to see a bunch of y'all at the grazing school here in a few days. And looking forward to meeting up with a bunch of you all. That's on our farm here uh, the first week of August. Um, the first week of September. And uh, hope to see some of y'all there. And if you want to sign up, there's a few spots left. You can go to greenpasturesfarm.net to check that out. And uh, we'll see y'all next time. Hit that subscribe button on the way out if you would. Thank you.